Hello guys, Lloyd here with you, back again with another part of this uh, beautiful Stuka build. Not saying that I'm making a beautiful model, I'm just saying it is a beautiful model. Um, it really is a lovely, lovely kit and I am really thoroughly enjoying it. So, where are we? Um, we have, if you remember in part 9, we got all the elevators and ailerons and everything fitted. I've done a little bit off camera. Um, just because I need my magnifier and stuff to do it. So basically what I've done is masked the inside of these canopies, as you can see here, so that the framing gets painted. And uh, that was really fun. Uh, masking inside a canopy, I think it's harder than doing outside because the, th the trouble is the tape keeps wanting to... You're trying to work on this side and the tape wants to stick to that side. And then when you get down the bottom of the radius, you need to make sure that it's actually laying down. To, so you have to follow it down all the way through. Otherwise, it wants to keep pulling away. And um, you get it masked and then you look at it five minutes after and it's all pulled away. So you have to be very careful. Uh, and also, we need to decide what's actually going to be masked inside and out. So this panel here that extends back and does the um, goes around the antenna, that's got to be masked on the, that's going to be painted on the inside. But if I see afterwards, it's going to be painted on the outside, we'll do it on the outside as well. We've got that one there that goes around the gun at the back, and then we've got this one here uh, around the middle. So this one's glued on, this one slides, this one sl well, should slide in real life. This one here is the armour plate that goes on the, on, the, um, on the windscreen here. Now, I almost completely cocked this model up here, guys. I tried sticking it on with some um, with some of this with the micro crystal clear, and I didn't. I just didn't like the look of it. It just didn't look nice. So I tried sticking it on with a tiny drop of extra thin, thinking it was only a tiny contact area, and it kind of frosted in the back of this. So what I actually did was sanded and I cut it off and sanded and polished this. Luckily, the glazing on here, other than we have a tiny white line at the bottom, which I'll put a wash in or something to hide, but. Um, Nearly scrapped it there, nearly made it inaccurate. I may end up not fitting it and suffer the inaccuracy. But the other thing is when you fit this, you can see this canopy framing through that. So if you fit that before you paint it, it's not going to look right. Um, so this is the way to do it. Paint the canopy first. You can see it's all masked and I've actually cut all the, um, cut all the tape around there. It's easy to do. Just put your masking tape on. Go around the cocktail stick, make a nice sharp corner, and then sort of go it sort of 45, 60 degrees into the corner and slice it round with a brand new blade every time. Don't try using an old blade. That's a mistake I've often made. And the other thing is, if we use aqueous paints, we can go around afterwards with a cocktail stick. And basically, if I've got a cocktail stick here, no, I haven't. So I have to get one out of about what you can do once it's all painted is go round and scratch the paint off if you get any. Uh, if you get any excess anywhere. Now it's no good if you've got the, the tape going onto the onto the framework because that's the other way around. But if you've got any excess paint bled anywhere, you can scratch it off with a cocktail stick, no problem. Only if you use aqueous paint. So if you start to use lacquers and stuff, it will burn its way in. So I'm going to use Mr. Hobby for this. And I'm going to do an RLM, RLM 71. But before I do any of that, I need to get this glued onto here. So what I'm going to do here to make sure I get a nice joint because I want to do some working with it, uh, I'm actually going to remove some of the paint from where this sits on. And this sort of sits on that outer ledge, as you can see there. It sits, the, the inner ledge there is the cockpit interior wall. The outer ledge there is the actual side of the fuselage. So basically, we're just going to remove some paint from here. So we can get that down like that. And then this side here, we're going to remove some paint. There we go. That's that all done. Okay, and remember what we've got to do is fit this, let it dry, have a look at the seam. What I'll do is I'll quickly spray some grey on there because we need to have the grey paint in around here. Remember I said you've got a lot of area here. You can see the area there that isn't masked. All that area there needs to be grey, otherwise it's going to come through green and you need it to be grey. Um, it might be even worth masking the inside of the canopy. Actually, I might do that and spray the inside of this grey so that it's got a matte finish rather than um, letting it have a gloss finish because it's so there's so much of it and it is very visible. In fact, yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll mask, mask this from the inside, sort of go a millimetre away from the glazing so that we don't see the grey when we look through the glazing. 
and then and paint that. So I think I'll do that and then I'll come back. Okay, that's that done. So you can see we've got that grey there, and I've used the um, the Tamiya LP27 German grey, and I actually sprayed that neat. I thought I'd see what it's like, and uh, it doesn't like spraying neat very much. So uh, remember that one. Um, I just did it like that for speed and also to keep it thick to prevent any bleeding. I don't want any uh, any hold-ups at this stage. Canopy masking is my least favourite part of modelling. I hate it. Um, I really do not like it. I used to hate decals. I'm getting to love them. Um, <clears throat> if you want to see what I've been doing just as a sideline, I don't ever just work on one model at a time, as you know. I have been playing with this Bell Kits Fiesta. This is the Fiesta S2000 um, from 2010. Tiny little error here, which I've got to go in. But that's easy, just mask it and paint it again. But you can see all the decals on there, um, all put down with uh, micro set, and then followed up with this Mark Fit Super Strong. This body has been sprayed with Halford's white acrylic paint, and it's um, resistant to the Mark Fit, so that's absolutely fine. But you can see they go down and they've gone into all these compound complex curves and that lovely. As I say, the only place there is an error is here. You can see that straight black line should follow around like that one does, but actually just kicks in. But um, that's a Bell, Bell Kits Fiesta S2000. Really, really nice. As you can see, those decals, decals have gone down really nice, really smooth and flat and everything. And I've also been working on this. Come here. This will oh, just chuck the bonnet across the room. Um, this is a Gazoo Racing Tamiya Toyota GT86. And this has been a complete and utter nightmare. Compared to those Belkitz decals, these things are a joke. You, you try and move them, they're really brittle. They're not that old, so it's not because of age. But they're really brittle, they're really thick. They just don't want to go down. I've had awful trouble. I had all sorts of issues here. You may be able to see there's a slight matness there. It's because I've I've basically masked up and repainted the black bit. Um, and now I've got to go in and do the white bit as well. I've got to do the white bit down here because it's just broken away. They keep chipping on the edges here because they're so they're, they're so hard. Um, they're horrible, horrible decals. And I can't wait to get a clear. You can see I've done the edge there because the other problem is that whoever designed this decal sheet, they made all the decals exactly the right size so when it comes to the edge and stuff you get silver on the edge so um i had to paint that blend that in black otherwise i had a great big thick silver line across there but um yeah um horrible horrible things not all tamiya car kits are this bad some of them have cartographed decals i've got some with cartographed decals but these are disgusting to use they're horrible horrible you can see if i can get it to focus you can see on this front edge of this spoiler here there's it's two pieces, so they overlap, and I mean, I can feel a step. That's how thick they are, you know. Whereas when you look at this one, you know, there's decals overlapped here, overlapped there, overlapped here. You can't even see it. You know, oh, it's just such a dream to work with compared to this crap. But um, it's such a lovely looking car. I thought I'd get it out of the box and do it. I just wanted to have a go at doing some car decals. So there we are. But um, oh. Absolute nightmare. But of course, once they've had a clear coat on them, that all be fine. Everything will be fine because they'll be sealed in. But um, until then, God. Ugh. Anyway, I uh, digress. Let me get these out of the way. That bonnet just falls off as soon as you look at it. So, anyway, as I say, decals used to be my least favourite part, but I'm starting to enjoy them. So there we go. So now we can get that in there. And as you can see, when we look inside the cockpit now, the lighting is bloody awful today. What is going on here? Right, as you can see here, that's made a hell of a difference, hasn't it? Let me see what I can sort out. Right, I think that thing's a little bit better, but it's still not perfect. It's just, ugh. What it is, I've been messing around my camera today. I, I bought a 7-inch um, HDMI display so that I can run this off an HDMI to see what I'm actually filming. Because at the moment I do it through the computer, which is over there. And every time I do it, it means I have to go into the computer, set the computer up, set the camera up so that they can speak to each other. And then when I finished all that, I've got to undo all those settings so that the camera will then speak to the computer so I'm able to download the film. I mean, I could take the camera off and take the card out and put it in the computer, but that's just so much hassle. It's just because they've got the bloody card is 
right next to where the camera mounts onto its mounting. So every time you want to take the card out, you've got to take the camera out of its mounting. Yes, I know I can go and buy a frame before you all start telling me, um, but I don't really, I'm not really sure I'm going to stick with this camera, guys, to be honest. I think I might change it because I'm not really sure it's right for what I want. Because because I know so little about photography, I don't know if it's me or if it's this camera, but I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. Um, <clears throat> but maybe I don't like anything. So there we go. You can see now inside there, the grey is there so we've got the the gray painted bit rather than having the the clear painted bit or the clear non-painted bit so we can get that glued on now which I will do right away and then I will come back and we'll have a look at uh, we'll get it sprayed up gray and have a look at see how it looks so yeah the other thing I forgot to say was I talked about I bought a little monitor so I bought this little monitor because I didn't want to keep having to reset the computer every time I make a film or do a bit so got this little thing from Amazon, turns up, great, what a load of junk. Little sort of seven inch monitor just to have sort of parked over here so I can see what's going on. And um, yeah, really cheap. So one of these where you have it in front of your face and you can see directly at the screen, but as soon as you move it slightly on any angle, it just becomes really dark. Um, so I don't know if that's because it's cheap or whatever, I don't know. But the other problem with it was as soon as you touched it, it would switch off. Um, or it would change mode so you'd have it sort of sat there and as soon as you touched it it would either change to AV1 mode or something like that or just switch off and then you put it down and it would switch back on and oh Jesus what a load of rubbish so it's gone back in the box and that's going back to Amazon now so I'll get a proper computer monitor or something I don't know what to do but um yeah let me get this on and paint it grey and then I'll come back hey we're done so we've got it on we painted it I masked it with some tape here and here um, <clears throat> and as we can see we have in this area here, you can see there, we have a wide panel gap, okay? I mean, a lot of people wouldn't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to worry about it because the rest of the kit is so nice. Also, we've got a very slight step here, so I'm just going to sand a little bit away there. This side is, is lovely. Um, that side's fine. Slightly wide panel gap here. I'm thinking um, that's probably me where I sanded away. I do tend to be a bit... Um, over the top with my sanding sometimes and I've probably sanded away some of the front of the canopy when I've sanded away the sprue nib or indeed maybe I sanded a brave part of this front cowling with the sprue nib on the back of there so combination of both or maybe just one or the other I don't know so I'm going to let that dry off a little bit and then sand one recommendation I would make to anybody building this model these plates here these armor plates don't do them until you fit this canopy because it's going to make all the sanding and blending in so much easier without them in the way. I did only put them on with a couple of drops of glue and I'm wondering if I can pop them off without bending them. I don't think I can. Um, no, it's going to break them. So <clears throat> I'll have to just mask them up and make sure I don't touch them when I sand. But luckily I haven't got much sanding to do. I did also notice that I had some glue, just a tiny drop of glue oozing from that joint at the back there. So I've just scribed that back in. Um, but that's all lovely. There's no... I mean, we can just come along with a 400 grit stick and just gently, as you can see, there is literally nothing to do there. It's sanding on both sides. So it's that's lovely. So that's all good. As I say, we've got to make sure we don't touch that, take the edge off that armour plate because it's a nice sharp edge on that. So I should be able to just sand... Sand some of this cowling away to end up with a nice joint there. And there we go, I think that's about it really. Of course we've sanded away the paint and now we've got grey paint behind it so it's difficult to see. But um, obviously the paint is also a little soft so it's it's leaving, it's, it's tearing rather than sanding. So um, this is how Tamiya LP becomes Viejo Primer. What what? <laughs> so there we go. So I'll leave that to dry a little bit longer and then I can blend all that out. And I'm going to put some Mr. Surfacer in that seam there. And then I think we'll um just sand it over gently and see and see what we get. And there we go guys, all done. Uh that's basically Mr. Surfacer gone round with a um a cocktail stick, a, a, a cotton bud, sorry, with um IPA on this time just removed it from this area here so as not to lose any detail um, and then basically the rest of it is sanded um, 
I've done it sort of early before the paint had a time to fully cure, hoping that it's going to slightly sink down and give us that panel line back. And as you can see, that's exactly what it's doing. This is surface that always shrinks back when it dries. But um, so you can see now we're looking lovely. If anything, I need to sand out. I think I've got a bit of a, a step going on there, actually. I think I need to sand that out. Yeah, there is a bit of a step there. I think I need to sand that out, just make that look a little bit better. But I'm going to wait for the paint to dry this time so that I can feather it rather than have it uh, tearing off. So there we go. Um, happy with that. Uh, what's the time now? Quarter to seven. It's okay, it's Sunday. I'm um, I'm getting myself ready. I'm not getting myself ready. I don't need to get myself ready, but I'm just uh, looking at the clock because tonight is Sunday and it's Scaly Models live stream with Mike, Sue, Chris and Paul. So that's what I should be doing tonight at eight o'clock. So um, there we go. I've also painted inside these. I've done those with the uh, Mr. Hobby number 65, which is RLM 70 or 71, I can't remember now. But um, so that's those frames done inside. So we'll see what they look like. What we'll do is we'll take this one here because this is the one I'm going to have to glue onto the fuselage. Let's see what it looks like uh, with the masking removed. I will remove the masking from the inside in case I have to do it again. But uh, I want to take the masking off the outside. Let's um, see what happens if it will let me take the masking off the outside. Okay, that's some of the masking off the inside. This is that bloody Mr. Hobby tape I've used on here, which is so darn sticky, it's just ridiculous. There we go. There's the outside coming off there. Side coming off. You've got to be so careful not to break these clear parts as well. And there's the outside coming off there. So there we are. So it looks got a little bit of bleed under there. You can see it goes a little bit wide. So we've got some bleed under there, which is a shame. This is where the tape's pulling away. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I will take this tape off of here now. And if I have to tape it up again, then so be it. But what I can do is show you now what I can do to cure that issue. Okay, so see where the... Let's get this bloody tape out of the way. You can see where the... Um, where the paint has bled across. So all I do is come along with a cocktail stick and because it's an aqueous paint, I should be able to just scratch it away. Yeah, it's obviously going to need a little bit of thinners or something to help me get get it off. But I need to just get that away. So I'll do it off camera because I want to do it under my magnifier. And I'll come back and show you the result. And there we go, guys. All I did in the end, it didn't want to come off. I just drop of IPA, just a tiny drop on the end of the cocktail stick. And then I was able to just scratch it away. And then you can see that basically you end up with... It's, where is it? I've done it here. So you can see there's some very tiny scratch marks on the inside of the glazing. I'm not going to worry about that. When the paint's dry, I can go over that with a cotton bud and just give it a quick polish. But um, we may as well remove this other masking tape here so we can see what it looks like. So let's see what it looks like from the... with all of it done. Let's see how it looks. And this is actually the 2mm Sizo tape I've used here, which is really nice for stuff like this because it's got a very hard edge. So we can see there that we've got that, that strip done inside the canopy, inside the glazing, and that's all done. So now we've got a mask up and do the outside as well. So I won't, I won't um, bore you with that, but just to show you how it's going to look, that is going to sit on there, not like that, like that, I believe. 
yeah, it's going to sit like that. So we can see now that we've got that that green frame on the inside. So that's all neat and tidy. Happy with that. Uh, and the other thing to remember is when you spray these, make sure you go in from the sides as well because you've got the raised framing in there and if you just spray it on the front you'll end up with a shiny silvery edge around it whereas you can see with this one we haven't got that because I've gone in on the edges as well so um, there we go so that's that I'll get some more work done and then I'll be back and I need to get this bloody lighting sorted out I don't know what's going on it's like the it's like the lights have lost half their power or something it's, nothing has changed nothing um, I haven't changed any light bulbs in the house. I haven't changed the position of any lights. I haven't changed any lights themselves. Very, very strange. Don't really know what's going on here. But I do need to improve my lighting. We all know that. Right, so uh, let me get, get on with something else. Just one other thing I forgot to show you guys. This landing light. Um, I don't know if I told you before, but if you look at it inside there, you can see it's got a lens on it. I got a lens out of my spares. I, I keep a... a every, part left from the kit I always keep. You can see this is my box of spares of clear parts and all sorts of bits and pieces in there. So um, I had a lens in there that was the right size. I just put that on the light. Um, and then the the actual cover itself, um, I think it was probably my fault. It was a little bit looser. I think I probably, again as I said, I think I sanded it a bit too vigorously. So what I did was uh, glued it in, first of all again with this stuff, and it just moved and fell out. I don't like using this for gluing in clear parts. Um, I know a lot of people do, but I really don't. So in the end, what I did, I glued it in with Tamiya Extra Thin. Okay. And then let it let it go off. And then what I did, I went around it, around the joints, with this stuff, which is a GS Hypo Cement. It's made in America. It's absolutely wonderful stuff. I was going to glue it in with it, but I know that it kind of tends to ooze out a bit. So what I did was just glued it in with Tammy Extra Thin and then went around the seam with this on a pin. Well, actually, you, you get a pin in the cap. You can see there you've got a tiny little pin in the cap there. So um, I did that and then basically let that go hard for about two or three hours and then just sanded it down 400, 800, 600 and just gently got smoother until I ended up with a sponge, as you can see here. I ended up just polishing it and luckily the, the clear part is slightly too big so it enabled me to sand it so that was good so um as you can see now it kind of is just one it's there's, there's no seam or anything so i can carefully cut out a piece of masking tape there mask that before we do any painting and then when i unmask it it'll look like it's actually part of the wing which is um i guess that's like what it is really isn't it um this under here i put this panel in here as well uh, I'm going to do a bit more sanding on that just to blend it out because it is it has got a bit of a bit of a step on it. Um, and what I'm going to do there is spray spray the inside of that panel. We'll spray it first with RLMO2 so that the inside is RLMO2. So when we look down through there, we'll see RLMO2 and not the um, and not the, the blue underside colour. And the reason I'm, do, I'm doing that is because I believe in reality from what people have told me. And from images I've seen that this was actually a um, a tin cover or an aluminium sheet cover should I say um, rather than a clear part so that's what I'm doing there so I'll see you back in a minute when I've done that right here we are next day now pushing forward um, gone around here with some green paint just to sort of make sure it all looks okay as you can see that seam line there now and we've got the rivets back in there got the seam on there around the front of the canopy so happy how that's come out I've also sprayed some green around here so we don't get the um, the grey plastic showing through the clear and obviously masked off the cockpit so I could get around that edge of the clear um, done all the other parts here's the you can see this is the the rear canopy now all masked and painted up and then we've got some parts to go inside it so we've got this little little piece here which is painted up green that goes in the bottom like so that's going to slot in there like that. Hang on. It does go in like that. It's a very good fit. Um, as is pretty much everything on this kit. And then we've got this piece here, which is like a, it looks like an armoured shield that goes over the top. So that's going to go in. Um, 
as I say, don't forget if you're building this kit, do not glue the gun sights to the gun. Um, in case you haven't seen any other, other videos, uh, when you get to, where is it? <clears throat> We're on the page. Here, um, you can see that we've got the P11, the gun sights actually going onto this piece here, which is C3, which in turn glues into C13 and C9. And C9 and C13 is like a pair of binoculars and it slides down over the barrels. Don't glue them on because you can't get the gun through the clear part either way if you glue them on now. So, in fact, I'll show you what I mean because uh, I can't stress this enough. You really don't want to mess your model up messing around with this. So, basically, to get these bits out. So, here's the gun. Okay, and here are the sights. Let's put these up with tweezers. Okay, so here's your gun here, obviously. And these are your sights and then that if I hold the gun those sights will slide over those barrels like so okay so they go over like that which gives you the gun assembly with the sights on it now if you do that you can't get it through that hole they will not go through that hole okay so what you need to do is actually fix the gun to the mount put the canopy in place and then put the um then put the sights on afterwards and i would suggest if you want to have that movable don't glue the the uh, sights on just have them placed in or maybe a little dab of white glue or something i don't know so we can put all this away now i won't be using those doors because i've got the other ones out now so they can go back in the box we haven't got much of this kit left have we so that's that um all i've got left in the box now is this sprue which is the bomb so we're not going to use it and and that's it um, and this round part here which i think of as sprue a and it's 25 i'm not quite sure what it is um it's a round it looks like some sort of cover it's like a molded recess in the center i'm not sure what it is I'm sure we'll find out. It may, it may be a part that's missed in the instructions. If you remember, I talked about this before. A lot of um, manufacturers these days, they sort of miss a part out. And you're, you're going through an assembly and all of a sudden you get to, you know, you get to say here and you'll find there'll be a lump or something or a bump on the wing that hasn't been called out anywhere else. And it's just suddenly appeared. So um, we'll have a look for that and see if maybe that comes up. Um, or it could be that it's for a different variant, but we don't know. Now, if you remember in my review, oh, I forgot to show you these, these are all the clear parts here, all uh, masked up and painted now, so they're ready to go on. Um, and that door had the chunk of plastic out of it. Which one was it? Which one was it? This one here. I put some Mr. Surfacer in the chunk that was missing, or in the hole, as you can see there, and sanded it out. So that's all good now, so they can go in. Um, if you remember when I did my review, I showed you on the H sprue there were some thin parts here that got seriously damaged, and here's the these are the bits of plastic that were damaged. And I thought they were part of the um, dropping mechanism for the dive bomb, but they're not. They're actually a frame that goes inside the um, the canopy here. I hadn't even noticed this, but there's a frame that goes inside that central section, and it's obviously a, a frame that supports the antenna. So I want to get that in there. I'm going to paint it grey so it sort of sticks that, so it sort of sticks out a bit. And I want to get that in there because it's going to look good. Um, so what I did was cut these bits of plastic off their mountings, left the mounting parts here on the sprue, and then I've got some 0.4 plastic, 0.64 plastic rod, which is 25 thou, and basically glued that to the mountings. So we've actually remade them. So now what we can do is clear all this sprue away here, and then we'll have them there, and we can paint them on the sprue rather than have to... You know make up some sort of device to hold them we can paint them on the sprue because the area where the sprue tab goes is going to be cleaned off anyway so that um let's get that off of there get that off of there so you can see now we've got the parts all clear we can paint them and where the sprue tab goes is going to be up against the uh, clear part anyway so we'll get them sprayed dark gray and then we'll fit them in and probably have to pull them about a little bit but they are quite flexible but i've used um tammy extra thin quick setting and a little drop of super glue on there so you've got the 
the fast curing of the super glue to hold it in place, but you've got the welding action of the extra thin, which um, makes it a lot stronger and less brittle. So uh, we'll get them painted and get them in. That's that. Right, so I think that's what I need to do and then move on because we've got this here. I'll have to take all that masking out, glue that inside there and then go from there. So um, I'll see you back when I've done that. Okay, so a little while later we've got the engine stuck on just so you can see how it looks. And we can see that we've got all the glazing on there now. And you can see how lovely that glazing is. You can see through it beautifully. As I said in my review, there's no distortion or anything. It really is. If I could just put my finger and just hold it in place. It really is really, really lovely. You can see that frame inside there now in the grey. Um, so I've messed up here. I've took all the masking off to see what it looks like and then realised I need to matte coat it. So it all needs to be masked up again. Now I have noticed from the um, drawings over the pictures I've been looking at that the it looks like the canopy framing was all green. It wasn't there is there is camouflage going up here. It looks like all the canopy framing was green. They didn't paint the the camouflage onto the onto the clear part. So um, that's kind of what I'm sticking with. It also looks like that's the way the one in Hendon is. I've also glued these uh, machine gun doors on. Um, they have a very slight, very, very slight raised edge, which I think I'm going to leave because it will actually sort of make them look more like panels rather than just sort of, um, um, you know, uh, panels as in panel lines like this. Um, somebody did comment as well that, you know, it took all this time getting all these seams perfect and everything. And in reality, when you look at an aircraft, it's all over the place where it's all bent and bent and buckled and God knows what. And the fact of the matter is, is yes, you are correct. Um, but they didn't have gaps everywhere. So, you know, some kits these days, like the 24th scale Hardcap, the, the forthcoming 32nd scale Lancaster, they've all got the, the, the canning, the stress skin effect. Um, they've all got that on them. And some say it's overdone. You know, it's 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 a real sort of love or hate situation personally i think this looks fine um i love the the stress skin effect or the canning if you like on the hellcat from airfix the only trouble is the the plastic has got that very rough airfix grainy finish to it so it's a complete and utter nightmare to sand down and polish back if you want that beautiful gloss blue effect so you know and then some say the 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 lancaster from border model is overdone um because Lancaster's never got that that bad because they didn't last that long. Well, you know, so sand it off a bit. It's 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 kind of it's like with this raised riveting. You know, it's like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You get this raised riveting on here, which is absolutely gorgeous, and everybody's like, you know, we love raised riveting, but it's a complete pig to work with as a modeler. So what what you do? You know, um, it's it's awkward. I I wouldn't like to be a model manufacturing company because it seems that. Whatever you do, you're going to get put, pulled for it. So, whatever. Um, so, I need to get all that remasked and then get this one glued on permanently. I've also noticed that I've got a bit of a fit issue here. I think, again, like I've said before, I think this is my sanding rather than the kit. Purely because everything else is fitted so beautifully. But this this panel here, it's sort of when it sits down where it wants to sit, there's a, there's a little gap here between the... Uh, will not stay on they're just so floppy um there's a gap between the windshield and that one so in hindsight maybe check your kit um before check the clear parts before you glue the windscreen on perhaps put a piece of plastic shim in there just to bring it back a touch um make life easier in the long run but i'm gonna have to put up with that gap i think we'll just have to imagine the canopy's not fully shut but uh we shall see how, I mean, it's going to look absolutely fine once it's all painted and everything. I mean, I could, in fact, I could add a piece of plastic to the front of here and then sand it and everything. I'll see what, I'll see where we go. But um, either way, it's, uh, it's it's not a major issue at all. So um, there we go. And there's those bits inside there glued in. There's that little piece there and that piece there. And that little piece there is just a filler to make bring the bottom in. Um, and then there's that framework that I've made up inside there you can see which I glued on and got a little bit of super glue wicked up onto the clear part there but uh, hey ho so um 
there we go guys I think I might actually do that I may put a piece of plastic card on the front of there and then paint it um, just to make that fit a bit nicer in there but, uh, we shall see so I'll see you in a minute okay scratch what I said earlier guys about putting plastic card in and everything all I've done is taken my sanding stick and taken some material off these legs that stick out the bottom of this central portion remember this central portion is the only bit that will be actually glued into place and that allows that to go further forward so when that sits further forward that canopy fits in there beautifully with no gap so and then that one still fits on and covers covers the step there that's the main thing so um there we go that's how it's all gonna look when it's all in there and glued in so I've got to do some more masking now Ugh, I hate masking right so um, got that masking done I've glued this uh, section of the canopy here that's glued on now because that's fixed and then these two bits here are free to come off I will leave them free to come off because I want to get in there and take the seats out to fit the seat belts as I keep on saying so basically we're pretty much now starting to look at being ready for primer I need to sort something out about mounting those exhaust stacks in there um, and getting them in on a magnet or something but other than that we are basically good to go all our seam work is done I've done the RLMO2 on that panel there um, the tail wheel is made up all our control surfaces are on we've got to mask those wheels up but we're ready really to start looking at spraying the underside um, you know get some primer on there get some um, pre pre shading in there I expect and then go from there remember don't fill in these holes here because they are actually depicting gaps in the wings where those rods come through so yeah don't go filling those in um, and then all this here I'm not exactly sure how that would look without a bomb in there but I'm guessing that's going to be kind of similar you've got the actual mounting points are here coming off the back of the bulkhead so that's where the actual main sling for the bomb was mounted and then the bomb was actually supported on these four points here and I'm guessing the hole in the middle would have been a cable for a release or something I don't know I'm just going to leave that as it is because I can't find any reference that shows it without the bomb there so I'm just going to leave that rather than do any guesswork. Now when I get the primer on I may decide to take these rivets down a touch because I've taken these down just a touch because they, they were more pronounced than those. Um, so we shall see how it looks. But we've got raised rivet detail everywhere. We've got raised rivet detail here, here, here. We've got raised detail everywhere. So we need to be very, very careful with our sanders um, not to remove any of that. Obviously, as I said, the guns I'm going to paint separately because they... Um, they will be a nightmare to paint once they're actually installed but uh, they're going to be painted separately and they're going to go in like that so they're going to be done primed they'll be sprayed the uh, RLM 65 and then it's just the sort of front area just the front area here of the, the this whole lot just gets a very rough coating of green paint so I'll do that um, when I do the camouflage but before that I'll spray the whole thing's blue the actual gun barrels themselves are in this baggie and they're done with them um, dark iron and I will obviously do some work on them to get them looking more realistic we also need to get this um, spinner mast up I mentioned this part here which is D25 which I couldn't find in the instructions I've had a good long look and I found it um, it's actually page 9 there we go you can see here you can see here this is what I was talking about it just appears there and there's no number to it or anything so that is D25 so obviously I haven't fitted that I don't need it I don't exactly know quite what it's for actually because um, the spinner goes on it doesn't go all the way back it's not a stop for the spinner or anything so you might want to leave it off because it might end up stopping the spinner going all the way on I don't know um, obviously my spinner is all glued up and I've dealt with the seam but I'll just show you as you can see the the spinner goes on it goes on and it it won't go any further on and I've got a little gap between it and the fuselage so that to me is perfect so I don't know really what to you know why that thing is there so you might want to leave it out the same as I have um, oh dear someone's upset a dog across the road so that can go in the bin basically so I don't need that so all we've got left now are the guns 
So we've got the two guns. There's one on there, I'm looking for the other one. We've got these few bits and pieces in here. We've got those counterweights and we've got an antenna and we've got the step to get in. And we've got the actual um, pitot tube on the wing there, which obviously I'll put on right at the end. Um, oh, and I've got the armour plating for the windscreen, which I may leave off. I don't know. We'll see. The um, but the guns there looking lovely. The actual plate, the, the, the step that goes on the fuselage is there. We've got the pitot tube is down here. But there is no mention whatsoever of the antenna going on. So we've got the antenna that's going to go on here. So... Basically, that is H18, so H18 is going to go there, there, or there. So, depending on which option you go for. So, um, so that's that, really. Um, and that is basically it, folks, for the instructions. And that is pretty much it for the build. We're just now on to, um, on to painting. So... I guess I need to get this primed up. How long have we got? We've only been half an hour. So um, I think this video is going to include some painting as well. So I'm going to get these guns primed up for sure. Um, get them painted. Luckily we've got the holes in the front so we can stick them on some spikes. I won't use my little metal ones. We can stick them on there. Actually I might use the little metal ones. Here they are. These are the... Um, I put them all in one box now. These are the high Q parts available from Premium Hobbies. And these things are bloody amazing. These little metal spikes are so much better than using cocktail sticks and that. So that's going to fit in there beautifully. And that one's going to fit in there beautifully. So there we go. So that's all ready to start getting some primer. But I'm not going to do any priming right now. Not that it matters to you because it doesn't matter in reality with the timing of the filming. But because um, it's night time and it's cold, I don't have the window open. So and I don't want to stick the house out with Jess in here. So I'm just going to get these wheels masked up. And I think what I'll do is get the bottom of the aircraft, or maybe the whole thing primed up. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to stay away from these clear parts because they're all painted already. Uh, and also, I'll be doing this separately as well, so that I don't have to worry about masking all up around the engine and everything. Look at that fit. It's bloody awesome, isn't it? It's amazing. You could get away without even gluing it on, you know, just leave it like that. So there we go. So um, I'll see you tomorrow for me, a couple of seconds for you. There we go. Next day now and all the primer is done. Uh, this is Mr. Surfacer 1000 thinned with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. That gives it a chance to level out nicely rather than go for the quick drying option. And as we can see, the reason for doing this is for checking seams. So I can check along here. I can check under here. The seam in the middle I left, which remember, because that's actually a hinged portion. So um, the seam lines are all good where they've been re-engraved in. Happy with that. There is a tiny little mark there where I could put some Mr. Surfacer and just polish that back. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just... I don't think you can see it because of the, uh, because of the light, but basically it's just there. Um, but you can see here, when you look at these, you can see one of the reasons for priming is is that you get this bloody bright light everywhere when you when you get the light correct you can see all the detail and um this is why people like zukimure when they display their sub assemblies on their stands at their shows and in their pictures they're always done in a light gray primer because as you can see there the shadows work for you and it just makes the detail absolutely pop and you can see all the gorgeous detail on these gun pods now that you couldn't really see before in the plastic because it was just grey plastic. So um, there we go. Maybe now you can see that mark I'm talking about. And then you can understand this is why we do the priming. No, it's, it's, it's very, very small. It's just on the back there. It's just a little witness of the seam line just next to the scribe line. So we've done the engine cowl. If you remember, I said about putting foam in there, but I don't need to now because this isn't actually glued to the engine so I can just spray it normally. Um, all looking lovely. All the detail on there is stunning. The, the, the rivet detail on here is so fine you can't even see it but um which means it's really worth explaining the next bit but there's riveting that goes over here i've done it but I've, I've tried to keep it fine the same as the plastic parts and i've kept it a bit too fine so i just need to go over that again just so that it sort of pops out when we do our um, washes and stuff um so i'll go over that again um but all the seams on there are good you can just see i don't know if you can make it out but there's riveting across the bottom there 
again because of the light and everything it's so it's so faint you can hardly see I wonder if I dim the light even more I wonder if you'll see the riveting no no it's so so fine but uh, you can see all the latches and everything on there. It's gorgeous, beautiful moulding on this kit. Absolutely gorgeous. I have actually emailed um, Border Model because I've been sending them, as I've been finding issues with the instructions, I've been sending them, uh, and yesterday, to give you a timeline of where we are, yesterday was Monday, and I actually put a video up with all the instructions, with all the, um, all the errors in there. You know, the few that there are, and they're, they're so slight, it's not really worth worrying about. It's not like, you know, massive, massive parts where you end up with two left-hand engine covers or something. It's just a few numbering errors in the instructions. A couple of people have commented, like, you know, how the hell are they making this disgusting? Well, come on, guys. It's, they're a fairly new company. The Revell SR71, I've been led to believe, has got part number issues in their instructions, and they've been in the game for 60 years. So, you know... Um, we must think about on this kit, the fantastic moulding, the fantastic plastic, the fantastic fit, the wonderful engineering. It's such a beautiful model. You know, a few errors in the instructions aren't going to bother anyone. Well, they, they obviously bother someone, but they certainly don't bother me. Um, but I just thought, you know, I'll, I'll show you the errors there and then the newer modellers amongst us won't make mistakes and be led, you know, be misled or anything. Um, same on here, gone over these seams here. Just to see if they're all all right, and they, that one there could do with a quick polish. It's got a bit of a ridge in the middle. I don't know if you can make that out in the light, but it has got a bit of a ridge in the middle. Um, gone over the wing roots, as you can see, they are beautiful. Um, I'm not blowing my own, own trumpet here at all. Went around these um, panels. I can see that they are slightly raised, and I think that looks quite good because it keeps them sort of separate from from these other panels. Um, you see down the spine here, no issues whatsoever. The riveting is absolutely fine on there. Whoops. Um, underneath got the seam line there which is beautiful uh, all this riveting on here is absolutely fine very slight witness of the seam down the center I'm gonna leave it rather than destroy the rivet detail absolutely fine um, but one of the this is the one of the things we do this for um, I think it'd be easier to show you the other side and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it but on this yeah, you can just see it on this where there's a panel line there, if you remember I had to sand it and fill it and stuff, well I just put some Mr. Surfacer in there. And you can see I've just got a witness of a line in the wing root and there, and they shouldn't be there. So I'm um, going to get rid of that, going to get rid of those with some Mr. Surfacer and then sand them out. That is one of the reasons we do this guys, this priming, is to show any issues. You can see I've gone down the roots here, I've gone all the, over the seams, all down the trailing edges, all along the leading edges of the wings. Um, everywhere where there's a seam, everywhere there's a join, and it's just basically checking because this primer will will really make it pop if it's still there. And then all we've got to do is like on this on this um, spat you can see here, this one's got a nice smooth radius to it. This one seems to have a bit of a ledge, so I'm going to take. I don't mean a legend, I mean a ledge, a ridge. Um, I'm just going to take a sponge and just lightly sand, and you can see that ridge in the middle is coming away. So this is exactly why we do this, because we don't want to see it when it's in the paint. Now, I know this is a video all about this model, but I know a lot of people really enjoy watching these videos and getting my hints and tips and stuff. So, you know, um, this is exactly what I'm doing here. So when we, when we prime that again, that should look a lot better. We won't have that ridge in the middle of it. But so uh, we can do the same on the back of the fuselage here. Just quickly go over it, just as a check, just to make sure. And we can't see any shiny lines there or anything in the middle. So we know we don't have any seam issues. And then I've got to come along with a cocktail stick if I can. Just wipe those panel lines out. Or a cotton bud. There we go. I just made the fatal mistake of picking up a cotton bud that was on the bench and as I keep on telling you time and time and time again you should never do it and I've just done it and this is something I used to clean off some some grease so I have just wiped grease onto there prick so I should be able to go over that with some IPA just quickly and just rub that away <sighs> wanker Honestly, honestly, I tell you not to buy anything other than Johnson's cotton buds. I go and buy cheap Audi cotton buds and they're crap. 
I tell you to never pick a cotton bud up off the bench. You don't know what you've used it on. And then I go and do exactly that. Because I've, I've just built a radio controlled car. And I had a cotton bud here so I could get the grease out of the tube. And then I could smear it around the bearings and stuff with a cotton bud. And that's what I've just done. It's picked up the bloody cotton bud that I used. So let me deal with that. And then I'll come back when I've done all this, uh, this little touch-ups and stuff. Okay, all done. So, um, Mr. Surfacer has been put into the little gaps and that. It's dried. I've redone the riveting across the top of the engine cover there, as you can see. All I do is use some tape. I tend to use this, um, this Sizo Curve Line tape. Uh, it comes in 3, 2, 6 and 10 mil, I think. Um, and also, I use this one as well. Because I know you can't really see the rivet pattern on here because of the the light in it because it's so faint but there's two bands of rivets here and they're like one and a half mil apart so I used a band of this get it over there make it all look so it looks right and then just roll your rivet wheel over either side of the tape and then you know at least they're parallel then um, same along the front here and then we've got a line of rivets either side and they're 1.25 mil spacing so if you've got a um, one of these or oh, where's the packet if you've got one of these this is the RB Productions Rivetar, you get a 1.25 in there. So, um, and all you do is you put them into an X Acto handle like this, and there's your riveting wheel. And it's absolutely brilliant. I love them to bits, they're really, really good. Um, so, use them on there. The only thing is, they tend, because they're etched, rather than being round, they tend to be square. So, if you're really fussy, you can go along afterwards and just pick out with a drill. Which is what I did here because it's such in such in such a prominent position. I don't know if you can make them out in there, but those rivets in there are actually I picked them out with a drill um, because they're quite prominent and they were quite large as well. Now these are very very faint, so I'm not going to worry about rounding them off and stuff. But that is the only trouble with using a rivet wheel rather than a rather than a press a punch. Uh, you do get like a, a square hole if you like. Um, the other way of doing it, of course, is the jeweler's things. I've got some of those. I've got some here. No, they're not in there. Um, and they basically do a, a circle. They actually engrave a circle into the plastic so it actually looks like a flush rivet. You know, where you get like the flat surface, but you just got a ring that donates where the, where the rivet was. So um, that's how there's a million different ways of riveting. And um, it's riveting stuff. Yeah, not. Um, so there we go. The other thing to do is go around with a sharp point and just check all the um all the panel lines none of them have got sanding debris or anything in them so uh, and that's and that'll be job done then so as you can see i've sanded over that so now it's ready for another going over with the mr servicer just as a check just to make sure everything's good and then we can start looking at doing some pre-shading yes i am going to pre-shade this one because i wanted to have that kind of that lift waffle look um i know what i mean even if you don't <laughs> but i wanted to have that sort of you know, out in all weathers, left in the dark, or the left in the dark, left in the dirt, and you know, and I know pre-shading is not at all accurate, but it really does do a good job, if it's done right, of portraying um, a well-worn aircraft without covering it in chips and dents and, and mud and crap like that. So it's, it's what I want to do is just, I'll, I'll go underneath. What I'll probably do first is do the yellow the yellow band around here, yellow wing tips and the big V and everything. Probably do all that freehand um, after I've done the pre-shading and then we'll mask that up and do the, the blue undersides and then we'll get to work on the top. But uh, lots and lots of work to go yet, I can assure you. So um, but it is a lot, a lot of fun, really enjoying this beautiful model. Um, oh, I started to say earlier, I um, emailed um, Border Hobbies about Border Hobbies? order model about um about the errors in the instructions and i got sidetracked about talking about the, the fact i've done a video and um i've got a feeling i may have actually upset them because I, I know there are some differences in chinese culture i know i remember seeing a top gear program and apparently when somebody copies something like if 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 Ferrari brought out a new sports car and then I brought out a kit car which looked identical, Ferrari would be suing the ass off of me because, you know, it's terrible. Um, if in China, apparently, if somebody copies something, they take it as a, 
as a compliment that you know that it's it's so good that you'd want to copy it so uh, yeah um and there may be a difference in culture that you know me trying to offer some helpful advice has been taken as as me trying to say you know, here you've made these mistakes. This product's crap. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I've emailed them and said I hope I haven't upset you. I'm sorry, and I've heard nothing back. So watch this space. But I really don't want to blow the relationship that I've just got going with a with a major model. Well, not a major, but a, a fairly major model manufacturer, and uh, may have blown it already. Never mind. <laughs> Such is life. Right. So um, I'm going to get some more Mr. Surfacer on here, and then we'll come back and have a look and see what it looks like. So because we're painting, the dirty mats come out, so we're no more of this nice clean green background. We're back to this um, limey old board. So as you can see, the underside now is all pre-shaded. XF68, uh, NATO brown, um, and that is because basically the blue will, the blue being a lighter colour, will allow the pre-shading to come through more. So if you go for like a black or a dark grey pre-shading with a light blue colour, then you will find yourself putting more and more blue on to hide the pre-shading and then you kind of lose the pre-shading effect, if you know what I mean. So I have done a video on this. I used a Spitfire, a 30 second cell Spitfire as an example with the Azure Blue, which I believe, yes, I've still got it here. There you go. That's the Azure Blue. It's this very bright blue colour uh, that I mixed up to go underneath the Spitfire. So basically, um, this one is an even lighter blue. It's a very, very light blue indeed. In fact, you can see it inside that radiator cowling there. It's a very, very pale blue. So just use something like a brown and that will give you a bit of subtlety. As I say, this is totally inaccurate. It is totally artistic license. You do not see this effect on real aircraft, but if you want to weather and make a model aircraft look aged, uh, worn, whatever, then this is by far, I think, the best way to do it. You can post shade. You can go in very lightly afterwards. You can do um, black basing where you paint everything black and then go in with your blue colour and fill in. But this is by far the quickest, easiest way to get that sort of real, I don't know, that worn, used look to your model. As I say, it's inaccurate. Now, the top surfaces, obviously, they're in darker green and a black green and a slightly lighter green. Um, so they're going to need something a lot stronger to come through. Now, you can see here, I've done the brown around here. This is because we're going to have the yellow flash around the tail. Now the yellow flash is going to be in this area here. So if I'd have come along here with the black and you had the brown underneath, you would see the different shading coming through the yellow. So because the yellow again is a fairly light colour, in fact yellow is one as one of the worst paints there are for covering. It's a very very difficult paint to cover. I will probably go over this with white first just get a very light white coat on there to give it sort of a, a base to work with and then go in with the yellow afterwards. So I've got to do the yellow on the wingtips and I've got to do the yellow flash above and below the wings. So we've got the yellow wingtips here, we've got the yellow flash around the fuselage. We've also got this, this V section here and then the same V section on the upper wing here, which I want to do before I do any colours because it's going to be so much easier to mask them and then and then paint the, the, the blue and the greens rather than try and get these colours to look good on top of the blue and the green afterwards. So it's better to get them on now, get the same sort of shade and then we can mask them with tape and everything. It's simple, simple shapes I and mean, that'll be easy. Plus I've got the decals to work with here. So we've got the, you know, if we assume the decals are correct, we've got the width of the yellow flash there, we've got the width of the, 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 the V-bands there. So they are just in case you don't have your kit yet. They are, the flash is 12 millimeters wide and the bands are, what are they, eight millimeters wide? Yeah, eight, eight. Yeah, just over eight millimeters wide. So we can cut some eight millimeter strips of tape. We can cut some tape for the same width as that, which was what I've forgotten already. It's 12 mil, wasn't it? Yeah, so we can cut down some 18 millimeter tape to get our 12 mil. And we can cut down some 10 millimeter tape to get our 8 mil 
and then put the flashes on and mask them so we won't be using decals in those areas there and that way then I can use these decals as a test piece so I'll have to spray something up with these colours, a scrap piece or something because everybody, every man and his dog has been emailing me to tell me that they have discovered that the border models um, I've just noticed we've got the uh, the spiral there on the nose as a decal in white. But I've already sprayed the uh, the um, the spinner in white, so I needed black decal, not a white one. So I might actually trace that out onto a piece of masking tape and see how it looks. But anyway, um, I digress. So yeah, we're going to get those flashes done and. And that's what I was saying, wasn't it? We can we can use these as test pieces. In fact, I could use this as a test piece to see if the uh, if they've made their decals a bit thicker so that the, the the colours don't show through. If they do, I will do some simple masking with um, probably post-it notes, and I'll show you how I deal with it. If you do have the uh, the colour coming through, so I'm going to get this now. I'm going to I've got all the bottom done with the brown. I'm going to get the top done now with a I don't know a black grey colour, and then. Uh, and then I'll be back and we'll see how that looks. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There is the the aircraft now, is the, the Stuka, should I say, is all pre-shaded. As you can see, it's very, very messy, it's very, very blotchy, and that's exactly what you want to do. I have seen people do pre-shading and they try to get it absolutely perfect. Dead straight lines, dead, you know, all down the panel lines, and they do the rivet lines and everything doesn't work you want it to be rough random and irregular because when you cover it up you want it to just just show through and you don't want this really really uniform pretty pattern to show through you want it to look you know very very random um, like you can see here the paint is thicker there than it is there it sort of goes off to one side of the line it's very faint here here it's sort of way off to one side of the panel line and that's exactly what you want you want it to be random you want it to be uneven okay now around here what I did I put some tape around where the band's gonna go and then I've just left the brown so that the brown will be coming through the yellow up here I'm just gonna have to sort of go with it and do and do my best I may have to um, once I've done the yellow uh, obviously I'll mask the yellow um, so that it doesn't get covered by the camouflage and I may have to pre-shade up to the masking otherwise you get this kind of um, <clears throat> where I spray the yellow it will obliterate some of this and then when I put the camouflage on over the yellow you'll have here you'll have the light grey and the um, rubber black which is the paint I used XF85 and then right next to the yellow you'll have the grey the black and the yellow and the green will sort of obliterate so you'll end up with this sort of I'll, I'll tell you about that when I come to it but you know as I say as I've said a couple of times this is all about building this model this is not about um, this is not about my sort of tutorials and how to build a model and stuff this is all about how well this kit goes together and now that we've sort of completed the build if you like we're kind of more into how I'm going about painting it and stuff and how I'm getting a, a result that you know you may find pleasing to the eye. You may hate pre-shading, you may never want to pre-shade another model as long as you live and I understand that and I fully accept exactly what you're saying and um, I can understand all the reasons why as well. But uh, for me this is the kind, I'm after this kind of used look and if whatever I was doing, any German aircraft World War Two Luftwaffe, you know, with this um, with this camo scheme, I would do this, without a doubt, because I think it just really, really just fits with the the genre, the the the, the Luftwaffe World War Two aircraft. You know, something like a Spitfire, um, a, a P fifty one. Maybe it doesn't look right, but with this stuff, it just looks so, so right. It's the same as like with, with the armoured vehicles. If you're doing modern armour, you know, um, British, American, German armour, modern aircraft, British, American, German aircraft, they tend to be well maintained. The paintwork is touched up. 
they are looked after, they're repainted from time to time. They look good, they always look good. If you look at Russian stuff, Russian armour, it always looks really, really rough. You'll see areas of, you know, on Su-27s and Su-33s, you'll see areas where the, the pilots climbed in and out, it's gone back to bare metal. They're kept out, they have really, really harsh winters, you know, and that's the kind of look you're going for with this. You want this sort of, I don't know, I, I can't, I don't have the intelligence to use the words I'm looking for, but I just want it to look basically just just worn and rough and that that's the kind of look i'm going for so um it's late at night now it's actually tuesday night and uh i'm going to leave this now and then i think tomorrow i'll come back and we'll get the yellow on and uh, i'll see you for that and there we go there's the base coat for the yellow <clears throat> yellow always goes better on white so if you do need to spray yellow then put white on first all i've done here um the, the stripes obviously come as decals, decals, but I don't want to use them, I want to paint them on. So um, what I've done is cut the, the V out that goes underneath. You can see that's roughly that one there, okay? Um, and then the two on the top to V off. Be very, very careful because again, these colour guides, I won't explain it in detail because it's not very interesting, but basically the points where these Vs finish is obviously where these will start and they don't match up. Uh, this one is much further inboard than that one ends, than that one starts. And this one is also, the, the, it's weird. It, it just doesn't seem to work out. So um, I've just sort of jiggled, jiggled it about a bit to make it sort of look right. Um, and then what I did, I got some, these, these are basically eight millimeters wide. Uh, so I've got some 10 mil tape, as you can see, put the 10 mil tape over. Then sprayed around it in white, so you can see there around the, the, the line there, and the same under here, and then took the tape off and filled in the line that I'd marked that I'd sprayed around. And on the on the tips here, I've actually basically used tape to just mark out where it needs to be painted up to. And as you can see, it's quite thin. I've let the pre-shading come through, made it quite blotchy, so that when we spray the yellow on top. Hopefully we'll see some of that coming through. It just gives it a bit of a, a nicer sort of effect. And on the back here, um, on the tail, should I say, you can see I've basically masked off a, an area which is roughly, you know, wider than the actual where the, the band is going to go. So basically now um, I've got that band of white there. And then what I will do is once I spray the yellow, OK, then the yellow will be on there and it'll be a soft edge. Then I'll mark it off with a piece of masking tape, 12 mil wide. And then when the masking tape is on there, bring the shading back, bring the grey back so that we don't end up with this kind of different coloured camouflage going into the um, into the yellow. Same underneath. It's it's quite a bit of work, but it's much better than putting the bands on afterwards because you've got this sort of blank canvas to work with now to put your white down and everything and you know, and not worry about overspray and, and just get the white down and then we can get the camouflage on with the yellow underneath it and we're not trying to colour different, cover different colours with the yellow, we're just covering the one colour white, we're not worried about any masking, any edges or anything, we can deal with that afterwards. So um, that's what I've done there. So we'll let that dry off now for a few hours and then we'll get the, um, the white on. These counterbalance weights, I haven't forgot about them, they will be painted individually and then get put on with a drop of glue once all the decals and everything on. You can imagine trying to dry brush this and weather it and stuff with oils with these little things stuck out. They're just going to keep getting broken off. I mean, I keep breaking these um, these flaps. This one's been, I've glued that one back on now. This one's broken. So I need to uh, get that glue back on solid. But uh, they're very, very fragile. These are okay because they've got more contact points. But these little flaps are... Um, very fragile, you sort of knock into them and they kind of break. So um, I'm not sure exactly where that one's broken, but I might get a bit of super glue on it or something. Hopefully it'll be a bit stronger than, than having extra thin there. So there we go. So um, next time you see me, I'll come back and I'll have sprayed on the yellow and then we'll look at getting that masked up before we start on the camouflage. We'll start on the underside first. So we'll see you for that. And there we go, as if by magic, we've got the yellow down. And this has been down now for about 
10, 12 hours. So we've got the yellow banding around the around the tail there. We've got the yellow V there. I'm going to take this engine off in case it falls off. And then we've got the uh, the wing tips done, and we've got the V there. And you can also see if you look close up, you can see that we've got that blotchiness, that shading coming through that just gives it that, as I've said so many times, that kind of worn look, which is what we're after. So basically, I've cut the decals off of the decal sheet. These are the yellow um, markers, and I've basically cut these off so that I've got them kind of as a pattern. So what I'm going to do is start underneath. Um, but first of all, we need some 8mm masking tape. Well, as we all know, you can't buy Tamiya tape in 8mm. You can only buy it in 6 or 10 or 18 so what I've done here, I've got my uh, Infini cutting mat. This is the Type A. Um, again, you can get these from Premium Hobbies. They're absolutely awesome. If you're gonna, they do. There's four different ones. I've reviewed them all. Go back and have a look. But um, if you only buy one, this is the one to have, and it's absolutely brilliant when you want to make these parallel bands. You, you want to make really thin, you know, strips of masking tape rather than buying all the different packages of thin masking tape. You can just get your Tamiya tape and make it yourself. And I'll show you now. So basically, um, I've got one here which I've already done to 8mm. So down the right hand side here, I've got, you can see here, we've got these the divisions, 1mm, 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. I would suggest if you're say, um, if you say want something 2.1mm, don't necessarily think that 3 times 0.7 is going to be 2.1 because I think they allow for the cutting as well. So I can't remember if it's slightly over or slightly under. Um, but so just remember to check that. But with this one, it works out that the eight lines is pretty much um, eight mil. So this is one mil one millimeter partition, um, and you can see that it's about it's actually about eight point eight, well eight point six. So it's a little on the wide side, but I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to come along here. So this is the end line. Uh, and just basically cut down there. So that's that piece. And as I said about making thin strips of tape whenever you need it, you know, for seat belts or whatever, you can see there you've made a, a perfectly lovely thin piece of tape. And if you go along to the next line and cut another line, you'll end up with a straight length of one mil wide tape, which is great for masking. So we'll come across eight lines. So that's there, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So come along to there. We'll cut down there, and you can see that we've cut pretty much nothing from this side. I had the tape too far over the other way, because we're only going two millimetres narrower than the actual tape itself. So what I'm going to do here is cut that end off, because that might be a bit scruffy, that edge. So we'll cut that end off, and get rid of that. Okay, when you want to clean this, a little bit of IPA, don't use Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners Runner, just use IPA on a cloth, just damp. You can just wipe it over, remove any glue residue that's on there. So, there we go. So that's our two strips of 8mm wide. We'll check that one. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's actually, if I go to the next line over, what does it come down to? Yeah, I'm going to go to the next line over. I think I'm going for too wide there. So if I come to the next line over, here you'll see what I mean. We now have a beautiful one mil strip of masking tape. Okay, so that's what these things are really handy for. And they're also good for cutting a nice square end as well. So the biggest problem is getting the bloody stuff off your fingers. So there we are. So that's that one. That's eight mil. And then this one here, we're going to come over one, and we're going to cut down there. And there again, we've got a one mil strip. So there's our two eight mil wide strips. Okay, here's the decals. We can put that over and just check that it's roughly the same. As you can see there, it's roughly the same width. So if we look at our plan here, whether this is correct or not, I do not know. But the, the actual V underneath the wing is where everything starts. And it actually centres on a panel line. So that panel line is here. Let's check you can see what I'm looking at. That panel line is here, going through the middle of that V there. So basically, I can take a piece of this tape. Okay. And I can lay that down. Careful, it all wrinkles up and sticks to itself. 
So I can basically lay that down through the middle of my yellow. Just like so. I'm not going to push it down or anything at this point. And then go over the top of the wing. Oh, these, I keep hitting these flaps and breaking them. I shouldn't have put them on really. Come over the top of the wing. And as you can see, it wants to go too far to the left. So what I'm going to do is actually cut that off. So I'm going to cut that off just there. Okay, and then we can put that put that down and then we can come along with our knife and use the panel line as if it's an infinity cutting mat and just come down through that panel line and cut through the tape now I can see that I've got the angle wrong because it's come too far back so I need to move it over this way so what I'm going to do is start again I'll put that on there like that. In fact, what I'll do is get the whole length and start again, see how that comes out. Right, so we'll put this down on here. And this time we'll come up further up. Okay, and we'll see how that looks when we go over the wing. So come up this way, push that down, and you can see it's still slightly out. So what I need to do is come in on a slightly shallower angle. over the wing yeah it's, it's it's tough to get this correct so I'll do this off camera then I'll come back and show you when it's okay, done. Okay guys back to square one so as hard as I tried um, obviously because that V centers around that panel line you can't have one side like this and one side like that because the width obviously changes as you as you turn the tape the actual intersection gets narrower so they obviously both have to come off at the same angle, equal angles, to that panel line. So that means that this one has to go that way a little bit more than I would like. And this one has to go that way a little bit more than I would like. So um, that meant that I hadn't done the, back, the painting wide enough at the leading edges. So I've had to redo all this. I've gone a bit further over all round. Um, and also on this uh, flash here, I noticed there was a chunk of dust in there. So I sanded that out. So I've had to repaint that as well. So basically we're sort of two steps forward, three steps back at the moment. So what I'm going to do is call it a day for this video. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is I'll come back with part 11 and I'll have the masking done. You've, you've got an idea now of what to do. You basically cut your 8 mil strips and then wrap it over. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and do it in one piece and wrap it over rather than, um, you know, one piece from here, wrap it over, one piece from there, wrap it over, rather than have separate pieces. And the other thing is we need to end up, if you notice on here, it becomes, there's a parallel line, um, which is, I believe, in line with the leading edge of the wing. Or is it a perpendicular to the centre line of the fuselage? Um, it's neither. So... You can see there so what we need to end up with a kind of parallel line across these and if when you put these on it's nigh on impossible to get that parallel line because of the the angle the decal is cut at so um or because sorry not the angle the decal is cut at the decal is cut correct but my paintings all over the place that's what you get for doing things late at night so i think basically 
you know you can see there we've got the this one is correct on that line there so if I bring this one around you can see then that the leading edges are my like so if I turn it around like so have that one like that maybe that's a bit more like it but uh, this is why I'm using masking tape it's so much easier to just create your own rather than try and make the the, the deck will fit, you know, rather than try and make it fit the job. So, um, obviously, I, with the leading edge as well, because of the, the the laws of angles and stuff, if I if I have it coming under the wing here at this angle, say, and then I come off at an angle here, obviously, as I go as I increase the angle, the joint gets wider, so we'll end up with a step. So that's why I want to try and do it in one piece wrapped around, which is probably how it would have been done in real life. But all the time doing that, I have to remember. I have this German cross that has to fit in between so it's no good having them too close together or too far apart because it'll look daft so it's going to be a real bit of jiggery pokery trickery and uh, but I think it's going to look amazing with that big yellow flash on there um, I think I'm going to have to do a bit of post shading on it because there's so much paint on it now we can't see the shading coming through but that's not an issue and then what I'll do once it's all masked up uh, then I'll go over with the grey again and then do the shading again up to the masking tape so that we end up with a consistent colour of paint rather than having the yellow underneath the camouflage. You'll see when we get there. So I'll see you for part 11. Um, not sure how much has really been in this one. I don't think it's been very, very much at all really has it? It's just me cocking up and breaking these bloody flaps off which is something I seem to be coming very good at. But um, I'm going to have to put a drop of super glue on that one. I think I'm using extra thin it's not doing anything my only worries if I use super glue it'll become brittle and break really easily done I just want to go through this because I have had a complete and utter nightmare bloody flaps look at them um I've had a complete and utter nightmare I've been trying to replicate what this here shows you and basically it's impossible I've been looking at this panel line and having this angle here and using the decal for the distance between these two points on the actual, so you can see what I'm talking about, these two points here. And I'm thinking I just cannot make it into a foul, to a straight line. So I started doing some research and I noticed that in the Hasegawa 30 second scale kit, um, the G1 has the stripes, the G2 doesn't. So I don't know what's going on there. Started looking around some aftermarket decal companies and they do some different things. Um, one of them, for instance, has this decal here, which is that one there and that one there, obviously, moulded as one straight line. But then this one here is kind of uh, not moulded, printed with a dog leg in it. So I think that's, that's a bit strange. Then I've seen some where they have the V coming all the way back and it doesn't even meet at a point. The point is back here somewhere. So and the lines go off like this and that that cross there is shoved right up into the gun and I think that can't be right surely um, and then I've seen somewhere they come up like this and then the top is really narrow and they have a small cross in there and thinking this this just can't be right so I've, I've looked around and looked around and looked around and I've decided that I think this is overall this is kind of correct the V shape under the wing you know open not ending up back on the wing the actual point is there and then you have this open cut off um, sort of V on the top of the wing but the reason I've been struggling to get this if you look at this I'll show you something here if you look at this outer point where this yellow stripe meets the the leading edge of the wing if you like where it flips over onto the top if we look here it's roughly 13 millimeters from the wing tip to that intersection where it meets the leading edge of the wing, you can see that there. If we measure this one, so that's that's basically it's coming over the wing and it becomes there. It's about ten millimeters. So I mean they're the same scale. Look, they've got a, what's the wingspan? Uh, ninety-seven, ninety-seven. So they're the same scale. So basically what they've done is they've got that there and then and as it comes over the top it moves along. I didn't actually check the other one so the inner edge of the other one is about 21 millimeters 
and the inner edge of that one is about 17 millimeters so they've moved it all outwards on the top so that is impossible to recreate unless you have a step between them as they come over and have them moved over but they're actually they're actually bands that go from underneath onto the top so I finally got there you can see the masking tape on there and we've got the masking tape now forming the, the V underneath and that I've also got another issue this yellow paint I don't know why but it lifts really easy you can see here where I've cut where I've cut the tape you can see that it's actually lifted the yellow paint as I've lifted it up so I'm gonna have some touch-up to do I've got some lifting going on here as well so this has just been a complete and utter absolute bloody nightmare I wish I would just stuck the decals on now got some lifting back here as well look on this edge so um when it's all painted we'll get some post-it notes on there and just touch in the yellow but uh, not to worry <laughs> I don't know what it is because I've used I've got some I mean the stickiest masking tape I've got is this one here Mr Hobby and I can put this I can put this over this brown and rub it nothing comes off I can put it over the black and nothing comes off so it's nothing to do with the actual plastic or the primers or anything like that it's it must be the oh, the yellow paint is, well it must be the white paint underneath the yellow paint that hasn't bonded at all well because like it's, it's, it lifts really really easily I expect I can lift some off here look but if I push that down in there I can lift some off no because the camera's on it won't do it look sod's law but, um yeah so very strange that one so it seems wherever I cut it it just wants to lift but it is matte paint so it doesn't actually bond that well and I did put it down very lightly to sort of fog it if you remember to get the um the kind of see-through effect which is gone now because I've had to go over it so many times so probably have to post shade it or something but uh, you'll see all that anyway so cut the tape off there as it shows on there <coughs> excuse me that's the other thing I noticed some people some uh, pictures this leading edge tape is peeling away all the time I noticed some images have this squared off some have it like squared off some have it like this way it's um very very difficult to, to see but you don't know what what to believe because you've got all these references online and you know you don't know if any of them are right I can't find a real photograph so um, you know I don't even know if the G2 had this stripe maybe it didn't but anyway so we've got the yellow wingtips we got the stripe um, according to Hasegawa yellow wingtips no stripe on the G2 um, so yeah yellow wingtips but no stripe and then the stripe is on the G1 which is the opposite of what we've got in here and I don't really trust I think this has been done by ammo I don't really trust that this is correct but it would appear that the majority of people have put these stripes and the yellow wingtips on the G2 from 1944 so I'm assuming this is right but the way it comes out is impossible to do so there we go and as if by magic there we go all the yellow has been Faded away, you can still see a trace of some yellow, but it's almost green, so it doesn't matter. And underneath, all done out with grey primer. Then I've gone over with the pre-shading, again, to get the uh, the effect up to the yellow line. If it looks a little bit odd and the yellow looks a bit too clean once it's done, I can do a little bit of post-shading. All I'll do is get a bit of yellow, put a tiny, tiny drop of brown in it, or maybe a tiny drop of green or something, and just go along the panel line where it was. And it'll you, you'll never notice. I, probably, I could probably even dry brush some on. Um, and it'll look you know really really nice but I'm sort of expecting half a disaster when I take this tape off anyway because it's going to be on there for a couple of days and I'm expecting when I take it off for half of this yellow to come off so well we shall see what happens but um this has been the worst part of this model is this um nothing wrong with the model at all obviously yes this this here has been misleading me but we got there in the end um and it's also you know be aware um, if you are getting this model that this is impossible to achieve okay so uh, unless you have you know the underside the yellow line comes along here and then the upper one starts over here or something you you, you can't do it so uh, there we go so these I'm gonna have to super glue that one I think as much as I don't want to but um, there we go so I really will call it a day now and then the next video we'll get on with painting the uh, the blue on the underside and um, 
you know, see how the, how the brown comes through. In fact, I might even do that off camera and then I'll, you know, when we come to the next part, I'll bring that along and we'll go from there. Should appreciate it around the bomb drop, shouldn't I? I better do that before I do any more painting. Right, so I'll see you soon. In fact, oh, the other thing I forgot to tell you, there's now sponge foam shoved in here and in here and in there and in there just to stop the paint going in and ruining everything. So um, there we go. So it's coming along. It really looks like a Stuka now, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's looking quite bothersome. Oh, the other thing I've done around the back as well. I, I forgot to show you that bit. Done around the back as well, where the um, where the yellow paint was. We got rid of that with the grey primer and then the pre-shading. So there we are. See you soon, guys. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.